Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, we are very excited to kick things off for the 21st Century Casino. Uh, we've got a, a great lineup today. And uh, our first speaker here, Les Odolangi, is the former EVP and CIO of Caesars Entertainment Corp., also the former CIO uh, of Sands Casino. And uh, Les is also a senior advisor at Applico. We're very excited. He's going to kick things off talking about some of the, the innovation uh, that is happening in the casino business and new digital business models. And I'll hand it over to you, Les. Nick, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on the 21st Century Casino seminar, webinar, and online conference sponsored by Applico, UNLV, and Blackfire Innovation. Uh, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, as the former CIO and EVP at Caesars Entertainment, um, I focused a lot on innovation and new technology. It was the same also at Sands Corp. And that's because the casino industry in general is an industry that is going through a major transformation. We can certainly see it in the form of online gambling, sports betting, iGaming, even what would be considered social gaming. And in that respect, there is this entire sea change of what would be the new technology and innovation that goes with being a 21st century casino. So in terms of a background, uh, my discussion today is going to be around what are those key elements that are driving innovation and what are the key foundational aspects of being a 21st century casino? And in particular, how do you need to look at this from a business point of view? Is it just about a single thing like sports betting or is it more of what is called a platform strategy, meaning not technology platform, but a business strategy, which happens to be driven through technology. And that's really what is at the essence of the 21st century casino. So if you take a look here on the screen, I have uh, a slide which talks about consumer behavior. Now, <clears throat> consumer behavior has absolutely changed over what we could say the last 20 or 30 years, but it seems to have become coherent in the thinking for business strategy in the last five years. We've seen the growth of things like social media and social networks, the adoption in the last 10 years of the iPhone or smartphones, and clearly a lifestyle and behavior which is primarily focused on what are now a digital connected world, meaning that people live connected to a network somehow most of the time. And if you're going to be competitive in any market, you have to be digital first. You have to think of what are the technologies that engage my customer in multiple channels, but ultimately what technologies support that and how does that make my company 21st century? The casino industry has clearly had to think about that and is now adopting those strategies and adapting to this new type of consumer and their behavior. And they're doing it through technology strategies, if you will, or technology approaches. Now, what do those technology approaches and strategies look like? Well, they look like digital platforms. They actually define the strategy of the 21st century casino. And that 21st century casino looks remarkably like other companies who have gone through these successful evolving models or transformations into digital platforms. Some of the easiest ones to, to think of and understand are Amazon or Uber. So in this day and age, would you rather be Amazon or would you rather be a retail store? Arguably, you'd rather be Amazon because it's a digital platform, meaning that technically you go to it on a website or a URL, an address, but it has all these functions and capabilities in it which allow you as a consumer to get free delivery of something that you couldn't find anywhere else and do it within 24 hours. You can also stream movies. You can then read a book. You can do all these other things that are on this platform that make you engage to buy more stuff off of Amazon as a retailer, whether that's movies or whether that's books or I don't know, lawn chairs, uh, whatever it is that you decide is important to you at that moment. I think more people shop now on Amazon by convenience than any other place. And that is definitely reflected in the numbers and in the share price of the company. But Uber, Uber is an easy example. 
it's a platform business. It happens to sit on a technology that is also digital. Uh, and that business is logistics of moving people and now food for food delivery. But in the future, it'll be the logistics of moving lots of other things. So would you rather be Amazon, would you rather be Uber or would you rather be a taxi company? You want to be this digital platform that is ultimately multi-sided and allows you to do lots of things on a digital basis that is connected to a network and connected to the people who use the network, which is basically everybody around the globe connected to a network in some form, fashion, or means by which they uh, do commerce or find what they like. Um, this is very true as you start to look at the casino business and the gaming business as it's defined and reflected in things like video games or esports. Technology really dominates the landscape now when you think of entertainment. In 2020, esports or a form of video gaming that is competitive surpassed the NFL in revenue. And then you could say, well, well, that's because we had a pandemic or there were other reasons there because people were staying at home. That was already going to happen. And before the pandemic started. And if you look at now the post-pandemic world, the revenue streams for esports are going to now not just exceed the NFL or surpass it in terms of revenue as a entertainment or entertainment sport, they're actually going to double what the NFL does within the next three years. That means that a essentially a sport which was maybe defined 10 years ago and it became serious about seven or eight years ago <clears throat> is going to exceed a sport which started before uh, World War II. And if you look at the number of players in esports, it exceeds any other form of entertainment around the globe. And people participate in video games, well, that's the number one entertainment activity around the globe. So if you took soccer or you took you know, the, the, the um, what would be the World Cup or you took um, Formula One racing or you took a specific race, uh, esports and video games exceed either the entire aggregate of those entertainment forms or one single event, which would be considered their most important finals, uh, most important single event for those entertainment forms. So there is a whole shift towards digital gaming that is also defining now the future of the casino. And, and I'll tell you, the behavior has changed, and I know this in a material way because this is a photo of my son with uh, one of the top 10 streamers from Twitch, and uh, he, he's got a little pocket glider there on, on, his, uh, on his arm. But my son is uh, 13, and he is a ranked player in Rocket League. And he is also now, because he's going to have come of age, he can join as a ranked player in Fortnite. And he has his own followers, and he has his own streaming. And uh, actually, this is how he makes a, his allowance money, is, is he has these followers, and he has his little ads and things. Uh, plus, he, he codes mods and such for Minecraft. And that means that behavior has changed at a generational level. And if you're a 21st century casino, this is your future customer. And your future customer is frankly not playing a game that my great-great-grandfather could understand. My great-great-grandfather could walk into a casino and still understand what a table game was, poker or blackjack. Could even understand, aside from probably the electricity and the lights and stuff, which might scare him, um, what a uh, slot machine is. Um, so the, old, the games of the casino, which were defined in a formal way, in what would be the 19th century, uh, not even the 20th century, are now outdated for an entire generation like my son. And for all those video gamers I was just describing, which are the majority of entertainment uh, subscribers around the world. So the 21st century casino needs to do something different, and it has to start with the technology. Unfortunately, the 21st century casino, in most cases, typically has a technology architecture, which looks like what you see here, um, a terrible sort of spaghetti connection of different old systems that really support these old slot machine models and table games and so on. 
and ultimately which need to be modernized either by acquiring the right technology company or the right person or the right team to modernize all of their infrastructure and for that matter their systems and applications. And it needs to look more like this, which is a coherent sort of service-oriented platform, which has all the right back office and front office and capabilities uh, and APIs and gateways to an omni-channel approach towards all of their systems and services. Um, that means that the, the uh, model for uh, the casino is a technology platform that lets you, be, that lets you operate across um, all of your different parts of the business, hospitality and gaming, but connected to all of your team members and so on. However, that's, that's a difficult process. And um, that transition and transformation requires lots of time and lots of effort to do the things that if you're in the land-based casino business, meaning the actual physical place where somebody goes to game and wager and have fun, um, you have to put in lots of technologies to serve the customer journey meaning you know, real-time offers, uh, casino tracking, uh, sports betting, leaderboards, all the things that people expect as part of a concierge service, even like mobile check-in, in order to feel connected to that particular physical infrastructure. Um, but that's not a simple thing, and it is not easy to transition there. So the 21st century casino really needs to look at partners who can help them broker the acquisition of these technologies or companies that provide these technologies and look for leaders and in innovation that can then also provide the consulting services and the direction. And frankly, they, in some cases, business case or the handholding in order to achieve the kinds of experiences that the customer is looking for. And I mean, experiences like this, esports lounges, actually very active new modern sports books, um, a, a bar setting, which is more fun because it has an entire surface at the bar, which is actually a video game interface or group opportunities. Now, mind you, there has been COVID and social distancing, but gaming in groups rather than sitting alone at a slot machine or a, or a video game is actually much more attractive to a consumer than act doing the old way of feeling isolated and just sitting there with a machine. So everything from um, group gaming to uh, VR to esports, and then groups and competitions in a sports lounge of fans with different teams or the same teams, all doing different activities from sports betting and watching videos to playing video games is actually the present and future of the casinos. That's the 21st century uh, casino experience at a physical level. But there's also the online piece. There is the actual iGaming online, which we're going to get to later uh, in this conference, and a online sports betting, which is probably the definition of where we're all going, but it had a precursor in what was the social gaming, which was the non-real money wagering but it seemed like it was playing casino games uh, offerings by many, many companies, including Caesars, who built um, ostensibly the, the best online social gaming platform, uh, Playtica, which was sold to Alibaba for four and a half billion dollars. Um, those are the experiences when you look at the 21st century casino, which matter. Really rich digital experiences on premise, brick and mortar, and then these really rich online experiences, which mimic that, that the customer can do anywhere at any time. So how do you get there? What is the innovation strategy? Well, Blackfire and UNLV are one of our sponsors. And for Blackfire and UNLV, um, they have created a innovation center accelerator incubator. Uh, I was very fortunate to work with uh, Professor Robert Rippey, who is a PhD in data science. Uh, and he and I worked actually together at Las Vegas Sands and, and in 2015 uh, remarked that the industry, meaning the casino industry, if it was going to be 21st century, really needed to have an innovation center. So uh, we came up with an idea, got sponsorship through UNLV and Caesars and built out what is the largest and now I think the most important innovation center and incubator for new ideas for 21st century casino gaming and wagering and 
entertainment and hospitality anywhere in the world. It is a 100,000 square foot facility in the Harry Reid Science Park in Las Vegas. And it really speaks to living in the future uh, every day. Uh, so to become a 21st century casino, whether you're online or offline or both, which I would argue you need to be both, um, you need a place to run your thoughts, ideas, experiments, and incubate those into mature opportunities for your customer. In other words, figure out what they really want. And so uh, Blackfire is that place, and that is part of the practice of being 21st century casino, consistently and constantly innovating. Now, um, with Applico, Applico has a framework for that innovation, and they're applying it within the Blackfire uh, operating model, meaning that you look at what are the best companies to acquire, how do, what are the strategies, how do you operate a business as a platform in the digital age, and how do you make it multi-sided market? So I think part of the approach is having not only just the space and the place and the ideas, but a coherent framework to actually make yourself 21st century. And then within Blackfire itself, there are specific collaborative spaces, uh, working groups, areas for startups, and ways for 21st century uh, companies in the casino industry to meet the latest innovations and innovators and, and match up with those companies. So there is a lot of opportunity for collaboration, and that is part of really what is necessary when you think of the 21st century casino. What is the collaboration model that you have? How do you get in front of innovation? How do you help incubate it and ultimately then apply it by taking something like a platform strategy, basically Applico's uh, framework? And this is across the board. It doesn't mean it's just you know the casino wagering. It's everything from food and beverage, hospitality, uh, entertainment, retail, and then what I would consider sort of the new stuff like esports, VR, um, the modern sports book, all of the things that are now not just the physical brick and mortar side of the business for being 21st century, but the online interactive and digital side of the business for being 21st century. So there's a lot to be done if you are a uh, casino company in defining your strategy. The market's going to force you there because the consumers are already there, which means they're digital. So your strategy is going to be digital first. The second part of that though, is that you'll have to adapt each one of your business models to meet that need. And with that, you'll have to think of, okay, what is the approach we take as a company to actually present the things that our customer needs. Well, it's an innovation model. It's an innovation model through acquisition. It's an innovation model through the proper innovation techniques. And it's a place and area to practice that literally every day. So I would invite you, as you think about your 21st uh, century strategies, to look to Applico, look to Blackfire and UNLV, and think about how you can participate in each one of those opportunities, either at a strategic level or at a physical level in this workspace, but also to start developing your models around what I described as the customer journey at a brick and mortar level or the customer journey online so that you are meeting the digital strategies of the future and becoming 21st century. So there, Nick, I will stop my, uh, my discussion and uh, provide you an um, uh, opportunity to ask me some questions. Great. Thank you, Les. Really, really great way to kick off the conversation here. A lot of great food for thought about what's changing in the industry. Uh, I think my first question would be, uh, you know, who do you see in the industry, either on the enterprise side or you know, tech companies that, that is doing this well? Who, who has interesting new business models? Who's integrating online to offline? Where, where are you seeing this happen? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I think that um, you're seeing it in different pockets. So, if you take a look at um, sports betting, one would think, wow, for online and being engaged with the customer, sports betting must come from a casino. Well, I think it really started with the fantasy sports uh, companies. And the obvious ones are DraftKings and FanDuel. DraftKings and FanDuel took an approach which was too aggressive at a regulatory level 
Um, and so they weren't compliant with this notion of wagering online in different jurisdictions in the right way. But they retrenched, they figured it out, and they came back and said, well, we'll, we'll be compliant. We'll you know, work with all the different states and jurisdictions, attorney generals. And what they've done is they've captured through their applications, this digital application, more customers in a period of time than any other casino has ever done in their history. So if it took Caesars, which is publicly, uh, you know, uh, uh, published numbers or uh, disclosed numbers, you took Caesars active sort of uh, loyalty system of 55 million, it, it took Caesars decades to get to that number. I mean, you know, 40 years, whereas DraftKings or FanDuel could did it in 24 months. So that's, that's just that tells you how the different equation works. So I would say that the, the leaders in capturing market share and, mar- and mind share have been actually the fantasy sports uh, companies. Now, from a brick and mortar point of view, I think one of the companies that w- wasn't suspected of doing, uh, maybe wasn't expected to do as well, uh, has been MGM. MGM has been working with Entain, and they very effectively combined MGM bet with the uh on offline or land-based casino operations. And they're moving aggressively from one jurisdiction to the other. So I think MGM's done a, a really exceptional job. Um, that is just operational execution. Uh, I think um, their CEO has figured that out really well and, and has, has done, a, done a great job with it. Plus they figured out how to get to uh, the right partner within team. Now at scale, I would argue that it's not even close when it comes now to video games. Um, you either are going to be with one of the major publishers or you're going to find yourself in one of the major tournament organizers. And there's so many across the, the, the publishing side that obviously Epic is one, um, EA, uh, you know, Activision, Blizzard. But uh, all of these companies could lean in very quickly and provide what would be social games that are not real money wagering, and then when the regulatory is available, be able to move in, depending on how they see their brand, uh, to the real money wagering and actually dominate the space. So I think there are three areas that, that pretty much define it. Those that can integrate land and online wagering, iGaming, or sports betting like MGM in a very effective way. Uh, those that already capture a large market like your fantasy sports companies and then your leaders in esports. Great. Thank you. And, and I think part of the story here, as you touched on just now and in your presentation, is this convergence between social gaming and video games and you know, traditional wagering activity. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Playtica, which is a great example of a company that's done that, combine, combining iGaming with social games. Um, yep. Where else have you seen that kind of activity happening? Um, seen this happening where... Uh, you know, the original iGaming and, and some of the uh, companies that started doing online, you know, poker and, and so on, um, were garnering a rather large audience. Um, where I see it starting to happen is in some of these, because that, that, that was then ruled not to be legal. And so they went offshore and so on from uh, a U.S. point of view. Um, I think where it's coming from is these smaller companies. So you've got a number of small companies who are providing now technology that can scale these different business models like uh, anti-cheating capabilities in uh, video games or small companies that have interesting titles of their studios that are creating more engaging models. And then ultimately ones that are a little bit of a hybrid of different things, whether they are AR and VR uh, based companies. I think to get a a full sort of list of these smaller groupings of of businesses or, or opportunities I think uh, the listening audience can go to Blackfire and uh, go to Blackfire website. Also uh, send a note to their executive director, Dr. Rippy, who I believe is going to be on a little bit later uh, today uh, or reach out to actually reach out to you, uh, Nick at, at Applico, because uh, I know you keep an entire list of these different companies that are emerging, but they're really, they're the list I would say that prioritize um, where, the future is going to create or whether in the future the value is going to be created because what I believe Blackfire does in Alpico is track that track. What's the next Platica track. What's the next growth model. And ultimately then how a casino company or uh, frankly could be private equity 
anybody who's looking at it from an investment point of view should be putting their their resources uh, or provision for acquisition and look for who's going to be play play properly and work well within their ecosystem. Great, thank you. We, we've got an audience question here um, from YouTube. Uh, we're also live uh, live on YouTube at the moment. Uh, do you see sorry? Do you see casinos working with AI platforms like DeepMind for new video games that they offer to customers? So basically, do you how do you see them collaborating with big tech companies? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, there's two parts to that answer. One is, and first of all, the answer is yes. But there's two parts to how the scenario starts to work. Um, one scenario is you have AI, which <clears throat> looks at the regulatory compliance, which I just mentioned but also decides how to match people and set games and rank them and prioritize the rankings so that you have continuous play. One of the biggest problems for sports books, and I I think you'll hear from Alyssa a little bit later on this, is that the latency between the ability to bet on a game or even inside of a game is so long that there's not enough volume. So AI is going to create opportunities for Lots of competitions all the time, everywhere, much like logging into Twitch and seeing all these different games going on at once. <clears throat> AI will allow you to create tournaments very quickly and allow wagering across lots of different opportunities. The second part is that AI, I believe, will create opportunities for games and more interaction. So if you think of a game like uh, boxing, You could create a a game where you have a virtualized Mike Tyson and you're actually boxing against that Mike Tyson, but the game is constantly changing. Or even better, you have your own AI, which is defined within a certain scope and a certain capability by the AI betting system or the AI gaming system, and your AI is playing lots of other AIs. So your AI is actually acting as a proxy for you on all sorts of opportunities, other places. So that's where um, the gaming becomes interesting. You walk into a casino, your AI starts wagering for you as soon as you hit the casino entrance, and it starts playing 30 or different different games that you signed up for. And maybe instead of betting just once on each one of those games, you pay $5,000 or $1,000 or $500 or $100, whatever it is, and your AI is now wagering for you across all these different games after you entered the casino. Excellent, thank you. I think that that brings us to our time here. Uh, really appreciate uh, really appreciate the presentation lesson. A really great way to kick off the conversation. I think you're you're spot on that. Uh, you know, what technology does here is it it moves us to this always on state where there's less of a kind of discrete state. I go in and I, you know, I'm doing wagering activity in a particular place and it's moving it to something right. that can happen everywhere all the time. Yeah, I know. I so, appreciate that. Exciting. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the time and the opportunity to be on your conference. Thanks for joining us.